want to wish all the moms and the grandmas and the great grandmas a very happy Mother's Day. Uh, we have these little cards, uh, Mother's Day cards on the tables, um, on the little brown tables. So please, any and all, mothers and all women may pick up these cards because there are prayers for our mothers. And so whether you're a mother or uh, a girl who someday might be a mother, pick up the card and pray for our mothers. So we've come to the ascension. And so we listen to Luke, both in the first reading and the gospel reading, tell us about the ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's like a victory lap that we would see. Now, I don't know a lot about sports, but I, I've watched the Indy 500, and I know that when someone wins, the other drivers peel off, and the victor makes a lap around the course, really kind of sharing his victory with everyone else. And this is what's happening with the Lord. He is victorious. He rises from the dead. And St. Luke tells us that he appears for 40 days. We hear that in the first reading. And then he goes to this place. All of his disciples are invited. He gives them a blessing, a farewell discourse, and they ask him, are you going to restore the kingdom of Jerusalem? And he doesn't really answer outright because God knows us. He knows our thinking. Our mind is on things that are temporal, things that aren't going to last. And he's saying, no, that's for God to take care of. The kingdom, they don't understand, is something beyond restoration of the 12 tribes and the monarchy in Jerusalem. It's beyond that, but they don't understand at this point. See, those tribes were decimated by the different attacks by the Assyrians and the Babylonians, and they want that to be restored, and Israel go back to the glory days. And he says, no, you just wait and pray. The Holy Spirit is coming. And he rises. And they see him go up on a cloud. It's very, very theological. We remember the cloud in the very first books of the Bible. The column of cloud that led the Israelites out of slavery into freedom. And the cloud is also symbolic of the sending of the Holy Spirit. And he rises out of their sight and they're looking up. Jesus, are you gone? Are you really gone? And these men appear around them wearing white robes, obviously angels. And angels don't have bodies, but they do appear to us at times in a human form so we can recognize them because we couldn't see them with our temporal vision, but they appear. Why are you looking up to heaven? Why are you looking to where Jesus went? He's going to come back. And we celebrate this, you know, 40 days after his resurrection. It used to fall on Thursday in this diocese, and there's just a few dioceses in the United States where Ascension Thursday is still a holy day of obligation, and people come. So it was moved to this particular Sunday, probably, if I remember correctly, around 1999 or 2000 in this diocese. And then... Ten days after the ascension of the Lord, we celebrate Pentecost, the sending of the Holy Spirit. But these men who are there looking up and these others that appear, why are you looking up? He's going to come back the way that he came on a cloud. He's going to come back. Well, how is that going to work? He's going to come back, not as Savior and Redeemer. That has already taken place. There are people are already in need of salvation that are coming into the world. But when he comes back at the end of time to bring all the faithful to himself, he will come as judge. And there are folks that struggle with this, especially, you know, in times when the preacher preaches a homily about some sort of hot-button issue in the church, maybe regarding the dignity of the human person and what is in accord with that dignity, especially in regard to marriage, 
And so some folks will write the priest or they will say something after Mass uh, because the priest is asserting church teaching, the teaching of Jesus Christ, our understanding of what it is to be human. And some will come out and say, the Jesus that I know, the God that I know doesn't judge anybody. And friends, we, we really need to be careful here. We are treading on thin ice. Because when you say something like that, we, I believe, are confusing the God we want with the God who is. The God we want with the God who is. Because the God who is, is revealed in the scriptures, is revealed in the sacred tradition of the church. And the God who is, if we open up the Bible, if we listen to the Nicene Creed that we will recite in just a few minutes, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, to judge the living and the dead. Straight from 2 Timothy, right from the scriptures. Don't believe me? Break open the New Testament. It is all over the place. He will come. It says he will separate the sheep from the goats. we got all kinds of art in the church depicting this. And it's in the book of Revelation. It's in the Gospels. It's in the writings of St. Paul. It's the belief of the church that we will stand before him and be judged for what we've done, how faithful we lived, if we've done the needful thing, if we have, om um, if we have omitted doing the right thing, sins of omission, we will be judged. And the men, they're looking at Jesus going off. And maybe they felt abandoned. The angels are there, these men in the white robes. And I, I, did you really leave? Yeah, I'm going to send the Spirit. So his visible presence is withdrawn. But they are reminded. They are re reminded what Jesus said. I will be with you always even to the ends of the earth, to, at the end of time. See, his actual presence is still here. His visible presence is gone. But his actual presence, this is what Dr. Scott Hahn says, is still here. Remember what he said. I will be with you. How? It's most especially in the Eucharist. He's still here. His visible presence is gone. He, but his actual presence is still here. He's here every time we gather in his name. Where one or two of you are gathered, I am there in your midst. We know that from the Second Vatican Council, it says that he's also present in his minister, the priest. And he's present every time the word is proclaimed. He has not left us abandoned. So friends, today, we celebrate the ascension of the Lord. And we remember at this time that he took this humanity, humanity that we all have, this bodily reality, and united it forever to God the Father and God the Spirit in the kingdom of heaven. It says something incredible about our human dignity. And friends, the liturgy says today what we hear in the Nicene Creed and what we hear in the teaching of the church, that someday we will follow both body and spirit.